Hello and welcome to an overview of how vCenter Configuration Manager 5.7, part of the VC Operations Management Suite, can populate compliance data into vCenter Operations Manager. Once we do the configuration, we will be able to see the compliance information related to a specific resource that we want to check compliance against. So for our example today, inside vCenter Operations Manager, we have a host selected on the left, and here we can actually see the compliance data for this particular vCenter host. Then we can drill into the compliance badge, and that will take us to the planning tab and to the compliance view. And then we can see the compliance information for that object we've selected, as well as our compliance posture. So for this particular vCenter host, we can check the compliance posture. Here we are at 86% because we have it configured to display as a simple percentage. Now, typically the easiest way to get this data is in the planning tab. That's to select compliance, then that will filter on the compliance views. And right now we have a compliance breakdown view, which allows us to see all this information. So now that we've seen the finished product of the compliance view in VC Ops, let's get a better understanding of how we go about configuring the system so that we can have this information captured in vCenter Configuration Manager and brought into vCenter Operations Manager. There are a few simple steps to do this. First, let's go to the vCenter Operations Manager Administration UI. This is where we would typically go and register things like vCenter servers, etc. If we scroll all the way to the bottom of this main registration tab, we'll see vCenter Configuration Manager registration. Here in our demonstration, we've already configured the VCM server and registered it because we're already able to see that data. But to actually set it up, we'd simply select New Registration, then specify the name that we'd like, the display name for our specific adapter inside of VCOps. In this case, we'll call that VCM Server 1. Then we'll specify the fully qualified domain name. In our case today, VCM W8 01A corp.local. We'll specify the port 1433, and this is a SQL database. And the default database name for a VCM installation is VCM, and the user that we want to log in as will be VCOps admin. Then we'll specify our password, and we can do both SQL and Windows authentication. In our case today, we'll want to do Windows authentication. The Active Directory name that the VCOps admin user exists in is called Corp. And now that we've entered all this information, we can hit the Test Connection to validate that we can actually communicate with the server. And it looks like our connection was successful. So at this point, we'll simply need to click the Apply button. But again, for our demonstration today, uh, we'll go ahead and hit Cancel because we've already properly done the configuration prior, which is why we've already seen the data in VCOps. So this registration is what allows the data to come through from vCenter Configuration Manager into vCenter Operations Manager through the VC Ops adapter for VCM. Now let's log into vCenter Configuration Manager and define the type of compliance mappings that we want to bring into VC Ops. At this point, let's go to the Compliance badge. Let's expand this tiny bit here and look at the vCenter Operations Manager badge mapping. This is where we're going to create the mappings that will be sent over to vCenter Operations Manager. So let's call this one vSphere Test 2, and we'll just look at the risk compliance. And for now, we just want this data rolled up into a simple percentage. We have multiple options here, but for now, we'll just keep it at simple percentage. In our case, let's do this against the Virtual Object Group Compliance and select Next. Let's select the All Machines group which will basically filter on all the vSphere devices for us that are in that All Machines group, plus anything subordinate to that. And we'll click Next. And here we get to choose what is the type of compliance. Let's select both vSphere for compliance and vSphere 5 compliance. And we'll select Next. And then we'll click on Finish. You can see we have a number of other ones here as well, but now that we've created this, one thing that we can do is to manually run it right now just by clicking on the Run button over here. So this is a simple ad hoc way for us to run this specific compliance mapping rule. But what we'd really like to do is to run this automatically on a regular basis. So to do that, we'll go to the Administration slider and open up the Job Manager. Then we go to the scheduled note, and in here, we'll see a list of all the other compliance jobs that are currently running. 
Let's add another one. So to do that, we'll click on the Add button, select vCenter Operations Manager Compliance Badge Mapping, select Next, and let's call this vSphere Hardening. Next again, and then we simply point to the mapping rule that we created earlier, vSphere Test 2. Let's click Next. Then we can specify how often we want this to run, daily, weekly, just one time. In our case, let's run this daily, and we can schedule this to run at 5 a.m. We simply need to increment the date by one day so that it can see that 5 a.m. starting time, since for today's date, that time has already passed. So this way, it will make sure that it starts at 5 a.m. on the following day. And then we'll simply click on Finish. Here we see the additional rule Compliance Job has been scheduled to run every day at 5 a.m. It will basically take that compliance data, evaluate the templates, allow the adapter, which is the connection between vCenter Configuration Manager and vCOps, to pull that data into vCenter Operations Manager. That's the last step that we need to do here inside of vCenter Configuration Manager. Now let's go back over to the vCenter Operations Manager. And now let's look at exactly where we need to go to see this information. For example, let's look at a couple of objects here. We have an ESX host selected, and since we're currently on the dashboard, we can see the health, risk, and efficiency. Now compliance is part of risk, so when we expand that badge and scroll down, we will see the compliance information related to that object. So again, there could be a number of different compliance templates that are pulling the information in, not necessarily just one. But we can have all that data aggregated here. Again, from here we can select Compliance, click on the badge, and it will take us to the detailed information that we saw in the beginning. So now let's move to the Environments tab. Here we can see a number of different badges, and Compliance is one of those badges. When we click on the Compliance badge and filter on that, we can see our overall world compliance based on the compliance templates that we currently have running against different objects in our environment. Here we see our host compliance, and we can switch between those two hosts. Both are green at the moment, but we can also see the virtual machine that's currently powered on, and its compliance posture as well, which we'll look at in just a moment. Now we can see compliance posture in the dashboard, and we can see it in the Environment tab by selecting the Compliance Badge. In the Planning tab, we can select the Compliance Badge here to filter on the Compliance view, and again, we can see all that compliance information. In this case, we're doing vSphere 5 hardening against this specific object, but if we take a look at our virtual machine that we currently have powered on, when we click on that, again, we've already seen that in the Environment tab it is red, and in the dashboard view, it is red as well. But in the planning view, under compliance breakdown, we can scroll down and see that what we are checking for, vSphere hardening, because this is a virtual machine running on a vSphere environment. We can see the templates that are running against it, and we can see our posture right here. So out of 48 conditions that have been evaluated, we are failing on a very large number, 42 of them. And also, we're doing PCI DSS against it as well, and we can see here that we're failing on a significant number of those conditions as well. Now from here, we have the ability to select View Details in VCM, and it will auto-launch our browser and go into vCenter Configuration Manager and take us directly to this PCI DSS template in the Compliance view inside of vCenter Configuration Manager. So to recap, we've seen how to configure the VCM adapter, which allows us to pull data into vCOps from vCenter Configuration Manager. We've also seen how to configure the Compliance Badge mapping rules, how to schedule the Compliance Badge mapping to execute on a regular basis, and we saw how that compliance data is shown inside of vCenter Operations Manager. For more information about vCenter Configuration Manager or the vCenter Operations Manager suite, please visit vmware.com. Thank you.